Cathy and I'm a teacher at the Boyne Island Environmental Education Centre. As part of our commitment to being a reef guardian school, we've developed a series of episodes that will focus on the health of our reef. This particular episode is focusing on our magnificent mangroves and the role that they play in ensuring that the reef remains healthy. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the beautiful Boyne River. Situated between the twin towns of Boyne Island and Tannum Sands, the Boyne River flows deep from the Boyne Valley and opens out into the Pacific Ocean stretching out to the Great Barrier Reef. Whenever we create a lesson, we always consult the Australian curriculum to ensure that there are links being made. From there, we develop the objectives so that everybody is aware of what they need to know, how they can be successful, and why they are learning this. So, what are the objectives of this mangrove lesson? I am learning to identify the three dominant mangrove species that grow in this local area, how the mangroves survive in a harsh environment, and why the mangroves are important to our coastal region. How will I know if I am successful? I can name the three local species of mangroves, describe how they respire and filter salt, identify other organisms in the ecosystem, and explain the importance of mangroves in the coastal system and the jobs they have. So why do I need to learn about mangroves? Mangroves are extremely productive ecosystem. There is a large array of species that depend on the mangrove system. It is a biodiversity hotspot. Mangroves work with the reef and with the seagrass beds to keep coastal zones healthy. And it's up to us to understand, appreciate and protect the mangroves to ensure the coastal zones remain healthy. The word mangroves comes from the Spanish word mangle and the English word grove. Look at these mangroves roots. They certainly look like a mangled mess. Who are our local mangroves? How about we go and meet them? Introducing Yellow Mangrove. Yellow Mangrove's scientific name is Syriops tagal. Syriops tagal is noted for his large buttress root. On the tree trunk are yellow colorations. This is where he gets his common name, yellow mangrove, from. Syriops tagal's leaves stand up like tall soldiers. It does this to try and reduce the amount of water lost through evaporation. Next up is grey mangrove. Grey mangrove's scientific name is Avicinia marina. Avicinia marina has a very complex root system. Can you see all, all of these sticks sticking up out of the ground? This is the grey mangrove's snorkel-like system to enable it to respire. These roots are called pneumatophores. Last but not least... Red mangrove! Red mangrove's scientific name is Rhizophora stylosa. Rhizophora stylosa gets its common name red mangrove from the bright red colour of the wood underneath the bark of the tree. These aerial or prop roots give it its spider-like appearance. Did you know that mangroves are just like people? What? How could a mangrove be just like a person? Easy really. They're both living things. We both grow. We both need water, we both need air, 
to breathe. Also, mangroves have lots of important jobs that they have to do to help us out. Do you have to do some important jobs around the house to help out? I'm going to go through now all of these jobs that mangroves have to do. I want to see how many you can remember when I'm finished. Mangroves are just like security guards. These big, tough security guards, they protect the banks. Not the Commonwealth Bank, the river banks down here. That's what these security guards are busy protecting. At the moment, as we look down here, you can see that the tide has gone out and we're left here with our large river bank. Over time, these big, tough security guards, they're here busy looking after these river banks from erosion, flood, strong winds. But sometimes when we do have some of these big floods come through, it causes a little bit of stress on these banks and not all of our mangroves survive. Luckily, Mother Nature is very clever at rejuvenating and the mangroves come back. These big tough security guards also trap any sediment and pollutants that are coming down the river or coming from the ocean. That's really great work from the security guards because it's stopping any of those pollutants and bad things from being swept out to our precious reef. What if there were no mangroves stabilising the riverbank? What would happen to the river and the land around it? Also, what would happen to the reef if the mangroves didn't block all of those pollutants from spreading out to the ocean. Mangroves are just like midwives. So these mangroves might be big and tough, but they've got a softer side to them. And they're a bit like midwives because they're nurseries. A mangrove ecosystem is an essential breeding ground for many fish, including reef fish. 75% of commercially caught fish have spent some time of their life here in a mangrove system. Who would have thought that a mangrove system in the middle of a river would have such impact on our coral reef? It's showing how the mangroves are linked to these coastal systems and why we need to look after our mangrove systems here. Imagine you're a big predator, you're a big fish and you're swimming around looking for some of these fish eggs. Would you be able to find your way through this complicated web of mangroves? No way! That's why the mangroves are a perfect breeding ground. Mangroves are like farmers. Mangroves are farmers? That doesn't make any sense. I can't see any cattle or potatoes growing around here. What could mangroves possibly be producing? Well, actually, it is an incredibly complex food web here in the mangroves. It all starts with the mangrove leaf falling down to the ground. And once it's come down to the ground, it becomes detritus material. Now, inside the mud here is fungi and bacteria, and they love chewing away at this detritus material. Other organisms then come along and they like to eat some of this detritus material, but also the bacteria, well, they're excreting their waste and that's what some of the other animals come along and eat. It doesn't sound very nice to us, but to the other organisms that live here in the mangrove system, they love it. Let's have a closer look at this complex food web. Like many food webs, the energy starts from the sun. Mangroves, being plants, are able to produce energy provided from the sun through a process called photosynthesis. Even after the leaf has fallen down on the ground from the mangrove tree, it is still storing that energy. As it becomes detritus material, the energy is then transferred to small consumers, such as crabs, worms, mollusks, and bacteria. Larger consumers, such as fish and birds, then have the energy transferred to them as they consume the smaller organisms. Humans are also part of this food chain as they consume fish and crabs that live in the mangrove ecosystem.
reminds me the smell in the mangroves. I don't know about you, but it's not a very pleasant smell when you come here into the mangroves. It does mean though, that it is a healthy working ecosystem if we do find the smell. The smell is just a byproduct. So as that bacteria is eating away at the detritus material in the ground, let's off a bit of a gas, like us humans sometimes. This gas is hydrogen sulfide, or better known as rotten egg gas. So don't be too disturbed if you do come into the mangroves and you smell that. It's not the person next to you. It's just a sign to say, hey, this is a really healthy mangrove system and that bacteria, they're doing their job. Mangroves are like scientists. How can a tree be a scientist? Quite easily. Mangroves are scientists because they've come up with a way to filter out the salt that's in the water and make it into fresh water. Human scientists have been trying to do that for a long time. Whereas mangroves, they just naturally are able to do it. So as the tide comes in, they've got a source of water, which is great when you're thirsty, but it's salt water. I don't know about you, but I don't like drinking salt water and neither do the mangroves. So they've become very clever scientists because they're able to filter the salt out and make it into clean water. Different species of mangroves are able to excrete their salt in different ways. Rhizophora stylosa has a very clever way of doing it. Can you see the yellow leaf on the tree here? All of these are green, except for this one yellow leaf. Now this one yellow leaf is called the sacrificial leaf, and it's got a really important role. The tree has chosen this leaf to protect the rest of the leaves. So all of the salt is sent to this one leaf and unfortunately it dies and they fall down onto the ground. I wonder who will be chosen next as the sacrificial leaf so that the rest of the leaves can stay nice and healthy. Listen to how some of the other mangrove species excrete their salt. Abyssinia marina or the grey mangrove has a pale grey colour on the underside of its leaf. On this side of the leaf, it has special salt secreting glands on the leaves. So instead of sending the salt to one leaf, like the red mangrove does, Abyssinia marina has special glands to send to all of the leaves. Then when the tide comes in, or perhaps a strong wind comes along, that salt is swept back out into the ocean. Syriops tagal, or the yellow mangrove, likes to do things a little bit differently. It doesn't secrete its salt through its leaves, it secretes its salt here on its thick buttress root system. As you can see here on the trunk, there are some large crusty formations, and that is the salt that's been secreted from the seawater. Mangroves are like cleaners. How can a mangrove ecosystem be clean with all of this mud that's everywhere? Well, actually, a mangrove system is a very efficient cleaning system. Remember I mentioned before that they clean a lot of that silt and sediment that's coming down from the river. As a result, we've got a really healthy river system here and that then flows on out to our reef. So again, these guys are doing the cleaning job so that the reef can stay nice and clean and healthy for us. Mangroves are also excellent carbon consumers. So often when we're driving in our car and burning different fossil fuels, we're emitting carbon into our atmosphere. Well, these mangroves, they are king at being able to absorb some of that carbon out of the atmosphere. So they're cleaning air for us. Thanks so much mangroves for all the great work that you're doing. Mangroves need to be scuba divers. Scuba divers? How can you go scuba diving when you're on the land? Remember that this is a tidal zone. So at the moment it's low tide and the tide's gone out, but in a few hours time, the tide's going to come in and this whole area will be inundated with water. Also, the soil here is anaerobic, which means there's no oxygen in the soil. 
So these mangroves have had to come up with some really clever adaptations to allow them to be able to respire so that they can get air. The grey uh, mangrove is known for these new metaphors. So these new metaphors act a bit like a snorkel, just like you would use if you went swimming under the water to be able to breathe. So these new metaphors have tiny little bumps on them called lenticels, and it's these lenticels that is allowing that exchange of gas. So pretty clever that these scuba divers have been able to adapt when they're inundated with water and when they're not inundated with water. Wow, these mangroves certainly have many important jobs that they are doing to help keep our coastal systems healthy. The role of the mangroves and their vital part to coastal systems, including the health of our reef, has been recognised and they are protected in Queensland law under the Fisheries Act 1994. This means that the destruction, damage, or disturbance of any mangrove system is prohibited. Mangroves are a biodiversity hotspot. That means that there is a large array of species that live in or rely on the mangrove system. So they're kind of like a giant booger because they're a soft bodied creature. They live inside these shells to give them some protection from bigger predators. What's really cool about these mud whelks is they're called gastropods. Gastro means stomach and pod means foot. What's cool about that? It means that they eat with their feet. Imagine eating with your foot. That seems a bit bizarre, but for mud whelks, that's standard. And they lay down here in that bacteria and eat away, yamo. This is a mud skipper. A mud skipper is an amphibious fish, which means that he can spend time both in and out of the water. Mud skippers have strong pectoral fins, and that's what helps them jump or crawl across the mud flaps. Really quiet because I don't want to scare them all away. But there's hundreds of them just down here on the riverbank right now. Keep coming. They've got these bright orange claws, and that's their distinguishable feature that they've got. Or the males, they're the ones with the bright claws there. But as soon as I get a little bit closer, they're going to run away and hide from me. So I'm just really coming in a little bit closer. See them all down here? Having a great time. They're also eating away at that bacteria that's in the yard. And off they go. <laughs> Fiddler crabs are intertidal animals and they're often found in large numbers. If you look closely up in the sky, you can see this beauty flying around searching for its prey. This is an Abramini kite. The Abramini kite is a bird of prey found mostly in coastal regions. They feed on fish and insects as they use their sharp claws to be able to snatch live prey. What if the mangroves were damaged, destroyed or even removed? How would that affect the food chain? To finish off with, let's revisit what we've learnt about the mangroves using some of this beautiful local artwork that was provided to us by a local artist. What mangrove tree is this? How did you go? Yes, it is the red mangrove or Rhizophora stylosa. Remember those aerial roots that the red mangrove uses to be able to respire? And look at those mangled roots in there where the name mangrove comes from. Can you spot that sacrificial leaf? The way that the red mangrove gets rid of its salt? What mangrove species is this? I'll give you a hint. Look at the base of the tree for a clue. Yes, this is the grey mangrove or Avicinia marina. Remember those snorkel-like roots coming up from the ground? They are the grey mangrove's pneumatophores. 
the new metaphors enable the grey mangrove to be able to continue to respire even when inundated with water. Remember, grey mangrove also excreted its salt through its leaves, and that's what gave it that dull grey colour on the underside of the leaf. Last but not least, who was that third species of mangrove that we met today? Yes, you're right, the yellow mangrove, or Cereops tagal. Cereops tagal has that yellow discoloration on the bark of its trunk. We also learnt that it secretes its salt through that trunk. Let's revisit our objectives for our lesson today. What were you learning to do? You were learning to identify the three dominant mangrove species that grow in this local area, understand how the mangroves survive in a harsh environment, and why mangroves are important to our coastal region. So, were you successful? Can you now name the three local species of mangroves? Describe how they respire and filter salt? Identify other organisms in the ecosystem? And explain the importance of mangroves in the coastal system and the job they have? All of our lessons are linked to the Australian curriculum. This episode of Magnificent Mangroves refers to the science outcomes, specifically the biology understandings. Links can be made from prep all the way to junior secondary. Now that we've completed the episode, it's your turn to have some go at some tasks. All of the resources linked to the tasks can be found on our website page. Scroll through as we provide tasks for Prep Year 1, 2, Year 3 and 4, Year 5 and 6, and Year 7 and 8. Well, that's all from me. I hope that you've enjoyed our episode on Magnificent Mangroves. And it's your turn now to jump into some of those tasks and have a go. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page and you can access any of the materials that are needed for those tasks on our website. If you would like to share some of those tasks and I'd love to see them, be sure to send them to us at bookings at boyneislandeec.eq.edu.au. Hope to hear from you soon.